Hi, I'm Simon from Avid. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the key things you need to know to use the Sketch Window in Pro Tools. Sketch Window is a non-linear creative workspace in Pro Tools where you can capture, assemble, and jam with musical ideas using clips and scenes. The Sketch workflow can be used on its own or alongside the linear Pro Tools edit window timeline. You could use it to generate ideas, which you later drop into the edit window, or you could create a whole beat in Sketch and use the timeline just for recording linear elements like vocals or guitars. The Sketch workspace is also available as a free iPad app. Sketch projects can be opened in both the Pro Tools Sketch window and the iPad app, allowing you to easily move ideas and projects in either direction between the mobile and desktop environments. Sketches are independent of Pro Tools sessions and are loaded and saved separately. There are different tabs in the dashboard for creating sessions and sketches, and the save command in Pro Tools changes between session and sketch depending on which window is focused. Sketches can even be opened and worked on without a session being open. The main area of the sketch window is the clip launcher, a grid where you can place or capture audio and MIDI clips. Each column in the launcher is a track with its own mixer channel and plugins. You can have up to 16 tracks and virtually unlimited scenes. There are two types of track, audio and instrument, indicated by the icon at the top. Audio tracks play back audio samples placed on their cells. Each instrument track hosts a single virtual instrument plugin, which provides the sound source for the MIDI clips on its cells. One clip can be played at any time on each track. Rows are called scenes and can be used to organize combinations of clips into song sections. Triggering a scene launches all the clips in that row. Above the clips grid is the scene arranger where you can chain scenes into a longer structure or a whole song. The top bar has main controls such as transport. To create a new sketch, choose File, New or open the dashboard. Name your sketch and choose a location. The sketch window has audio input and output selectors. By default, output will go directly to your main audition path, but you can also route into a Pro Tools bus or track. The general settings for your sketch are here. I'm going to set my sketch to 132 beats per minute 4-4. The sketch window has an integral sound browser accessed here. The sound library tab points to all the built-in audio and MIDI clips in Sketch's factory library. On the browse side, you can navigate to other loops and samples on your computer, like the Loopmasters library and Sonic Drop Packs included with Pro Tools Artist Studio and Ultimate. The Sketch Browser can audition samples at their original speed, or if the metronome icon is lit, loops will play back and sync to your sketch tempo. To add a loop to your sketch, drag it into a slot in the clip launcher, choosing either an instrument track or an audio track, depending on whether the clip is MIDI or audio. You can also drag into empty space on the right, or double click a clip to create a new track. Clips you bring in are always matched to the tempo of the project. You trigger clips with their play buttons and stop them using the track stop clip button. Launch Quantize determines when triggered clips begin playing back. By default, clip launching happens at the start of the next bar, but you can set this to longer or shorter intervals. Let's add another clip from the built-in library. Double clicking a clip opens the editor. You can also close and open this from the tab at the bottom. Let's duplicate this clip and make some changes to it. You can adjust the position and the length of the playback loop here. And you can make the sample a one shot by switching off loop. Selection highlights a range within the clip to apply any of the three edit operations. You can delete a section. I'll just undo that. Separate it or duplicate the selection. Clicking and holding for a second lets you move audio regions around. Reverse flips the selected section. Trim is a quick mode for topping and tailing your clip. 
Fade lets you apply start and end fades, and Stretch lets you warp the clip's speed. All of these edit functions will snap to the grid unless you disable grid mode here. To the left here are gain and pitch controls. I'm going to change the pitch and loop a small section of my feature sample to create a variation. I can now switch between these two versions to create a chord progression. Instrument tracks allow you to play and record MIDI parts using Sketch's built in instruments, Play Cell and Synth Cell. To choose and control an instrument, open the track tab by clicking it or double clicking a track header. New instrument tracks start with Play Cell in their first plugin slot, but you can swap this for Synth Cell by clicking on the plugin icon. Play Cell is a sample based sound module with a collection of acoustic instruments, synths, and drum kits. Instrument type patches have a standard keyboard and four predefined macro controls for shaping the sound. You can randomize these with the die icon. Further controls are revealed by clicking here. If you load a drum kit patch, the keyboard is replaced with a set of eight pads triggered from C1 upwards on a MIDI keyboard. You can process the sound from your instrument in the two effect slots on the track. I'm going to add a saturation plug in here to boost and fatten up this kit. Let's record something. You can play the instrument from the screen or your MIDI keyboard by selecting the track. If you want to record, first arm the track. The clip slots will now show record buttons When you're ready to record, click here and recording will start at the next bar. To stop recording, click the clip again. Recording will continue until the end of the current bar, then the clip will start to play back. Alternatively, you could click another clip to immediately start recording into another slot. Clips playing back on a record arm track will continue to capture MIDI and overdub it into the existing pattern. To view and edit the recording you've just made, double click the clip or select the editor tab. Like the audio editor, you can adjust playback range here, which is handy if you've overshot the end of the loop. By default, new recordings are fully quantized to the global grid setting. The amount of timing correction can be dialed back here, and swing can be applied here. Individual notes can be deleted by double clicking and can be created in the same way. If you need to move the note view around, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse or the scroll gestures on a trackpad, or click and hold, then drag. With a mouse, hold Alt and turn the scroll wheel to zoom. To move a note, just click and drag. Note start and end points can be adjusted by dragging from their edges. To make fine adjustments, disable the grid, but note that with quantize at 100%, note starts will still effectively be bound to the grid. To adjust the velocity of notes, enable velocity edit mode. Then click and drag up or down on notes you wish to edit. SynthCell is a versatile two oscillator synth plugin, which, like PlayCell, you can use in Sketch or in Pro Tools tracks. It has multiple panel views that give you complete control over the oscillators, filters, modulation, effects, and performance parameters. SynthCell has a library of useful presets, but you can also create your own unique sounds. Now I'll record two new clips to match the two audio loop variations I set up. You can also record audio directly into Sketch, either from a hardware input or from a bus in Pro Tools. 
I've got my bass guitar coming into Pro Tools and going through the PSA amp and C1 chorus plugins, then routed to Sketch via an internal stereo bus. Recording an audio clip works just the same as MIDI. The green mic icon engages input monitoring. Okay, I'll just look at what I've recorded in the editor and trim it back to four bars. Sketch has its own internal mixer with level controls, panners, and mute and solo buttons. There are also insert points for the internal instruments and effects. You have a selection of creative effects like lo-fi and mixing tools like EQ. Each effect has a simple performance view with XY control of two parameters to quickly tweak the sound and an advanced view with more parameters for finer control. Delay and reverb can be applied as insert effects on individual tracks, but there are also master effect sends for delay and reverb here. Using the send effects is great for giving tracks a sense of shared space or vibe. These effects can be adjusted in the global effects tab here. When you've assembled some clips, you can start to think about structuring your ideas. By setting up some scenes with different combinations of clips, you can quickly experiment with different song arrangements without committing anything or editing in the timeline. I've already got these A and B sections running on two different scenes. I'll quickly complete the second one into a self-contained scene by copying the rhythm clips. I can right click and duplicate or simply option drag. Next, I'm gonna create a new scene above the first one and then copy my main sample loop up to here to create an intro. Now I'll try out what I want to bring in next. So it might be this percussion loop. I can instantly capture this combination as a new scene using the create scene from playing function. I could continue to do the same again or another option is to duplicate a scene and add things that way. I can also duplicate a scene to a specific place with option drag. Let's take the second scene and drop it here to create a small break before everything else kicks in. In my arrangement, I'll only want this loop to play for two bars, so I'm going to trim down the clips. I now have song sections that I can experiment with by launching. But first I'll finish naming and colour coding the scenes. At this point you could use your scenes to start arranging into the Pro Tools timeline, and we'll look at that in a moment. But you can also assemble an arrangement inside Sketch by dropping scenes into the Scene Arranger in the order you want them to play. By setting the number of repeats, you can choose how long each scene loops for before moving on to the next step in the song. You might want to do this if you're working in Sketch standalone, or if you want to try out different options, or even to prepare a sketch for live performance on your iPad. You can switch the Sketch window between Arrangement and Scene Playback modes. With Arrangement selected, Sketch will play back your song sequence. If you want to swap back to manual scene launching, you can select scenes and trigger from the clip launcher. The main location counter will continue and you can drop back into your arrangement later. You can export your arrangement as a stereo wave file by clicking the three dots here. The sketch window is especially powerful when used alongside the traditional linear timeline in Pro Tools. Although sketches and sessions are independent files, you can pin sketches to one or more sessions using the pin button. Pin sketches close and open automatically alongside their Pro Tools session. The sketch window is managed independently of the edit and mix windows. The sketch window can be brought to the front at any time with the shortcut Control Option Command equals. If you're going to be working in both the edit and sketch windows, you might want to arrange them side by side on your screen or on separate displays. The sketch window has its own tempo, play position and transport controls. However, if you engage the sync button, these will all follow your Pro Tools session. This opens up many different workflows, such as recording linear parts, like vocals or instruments, alongside a sketch-based composition, or using Sketch as a loop and beat workstation within your traditional Pro Tools environment. In this session, I'm running a sketch arrangement in sync with the edit window. 
I've replaced the bass loop idea with a recorded performance. I've also used the timeline to add spot effects and improvise some guitars. The audio mix from the sketch window can be brought into the Pro Tools mixer by routing to an AUX track. You can also record audio and performances from Sketch by routing to an audio track. Another workflow is to grab elements from your Sketch to use in the edit window. MIDI clips will be rendered as audio. The audio is rendered before any effects in the Sketch mixer. MIDI and audio clips can be copied the other way, going from the edit window or the workspace to Sketch. You can also drag whole scenes from Sketch to Pro Tools. If you drag to an empty space, new tracks will be created, which match the name and color of those in Sketch. Tracks that have no clips in the dragged scene are also created in the edit window, ensuring that the project structure is matched between the two windows and any other scenes that you bring across later on. When clips are different lengths, Pro Tools will loop all the clips to match the longest clip. Finally, you can drag an entire scene arrangement from the sketch window into the edit window. So that's the Pro Tools sketch window. Look out for more videos exploring new Pro Tools workflows made possible by Sketch. Sketch for iPad is a free app available on the App Store, and Sketch is built into every version of Pro Tools, from intro to ultimate. Pro Tools Intro is a free DAW that's perfect for getting started making music. Check out the links below for more information on Pro Tools, Sonic Drop, and where to learn more. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.